for our last talk today, I'm introducing Gregory Marler. Uh, Gregory has been the subject of uh, some news when he uh, moved many years ago. He moved to Durham and he said that, no, well, there's not much of any map on OpenStreetMap here in this area. I'm going to try and navigate by that little bit of map I have and improve it while I'm doing so. Um, and in so doing, basically single-handedly created the map of Durham and OpenStreetMap. Today, he is not the subject of people talking, but he has invited a couple of guests, a couple of mappers to talk about their job, their work in OpenStreetMap. Go ahead. Hello, I'm Gregory, um, and I've enjoyed doing space of the map conferences for a number of years. Um, I'm sure you know OpenStreetMap is about the people that make it um, in various different ways. And those people involved in OpenStreetMap, we often call them OpenStreetMappers. Um, and so we can chat to people normally in the breaks. It's a bit different this year, of course. Um, so I thought I'd have a chat, help you meet some mappers by speaking to a couple of um, people I know have been involved for a different number of years um, and to just ask them some questions, some friendly chat rather than about a specific subject. So I've got uh, not too far away for our first street mapper. Um, hello, Ian. Hello, Greg. Um, so, how will we know you in OpenStreetMap? My OpenStreetMap username is Examiner Ian, which is one that I've had for a long, long, long time. And it's one I've kept, you know, on Twitter and things like that as well. So, despite the lockdown, I'm not that far down the road from me. Where are we to we? We're in the beautiful city of Durham. I feel that uh, cathedral cities are a bit of a thing there because I was actually born in Ripon, which is another beautiful little cathedral city. Um, but we are in, in sunny Durham at the moment and uh, on either side of it, really, aren't we? So one, I, one, I'm on one side, you're on the other, basically. Um, on to the first mapping question. Uh, what's the first mapping you did in OpenStreetMap? How did it, where, what did you start with? Ooh, it, uh, a lot of my mapping actually has been the humanitarian open street map stuff, the um, the hot OSM uh, response to crises. So I think the first one I did was the um, refugee camps uh, in Africa, um, where they were going across the border from, I think, Sudan, South Sudan. And those ones where we were mapping out so that they could see where, where people were at, how many people were there. The changes over year over the uh, the time in which people have been coming across the border, and so but they could then get relief in as and where it was needed, you know. So I think that was it. Most of my hot OSM stuff actually has been in Africa. Strangely, other things, other projects have been elsewhere. Um, so it started with hot. Um, how did that start? Um, when, well, yeah, how did you, more, well, how did you get into mapping at home after here in the UK? Well, do you know, it's it's the quarterly projects that, that get me going on that one. And the, the biggest one I think I was involved with was the uh, the one to map solar panel yeah. um, distribution around the, around the country. So we all do our little bit wherever we're at. And that was a challenge because I think in the end, <laughs> everyone in the car when we were driving along was, oh, look, there's one over there. Oh, there's some over there. Don't forget that one over there. And so we had um, a, a, almost a family family fun thing trying to spot them all, you know. Mm. Um, but that was that's the biggest one I've got involved with. And other things have been just little bits and pieces here, editing buildings, names around my local area, um, just keeping the map up to date, pretty much like what you do as well, isn't it? Um, yeah. So and then, um, I've been doing it for a, a couple of years. At the start, what got you into mapping and um, um, well, actually, Greg, it was actually an invite from you, wasn't it? So we were all, uh, <laughs> yeah, we had we had this uh, this meeting 
at, uh, at the, the church building down the road uh, where we meet. And uh, it was a request, wasn't it, to get involved in things. So we all sat in one of the upstairs conferencing rooms, a bit like, I don't know, a gaming cafe thing. Everyone had a laptop in front of them. And then we all got on with uh, mapping out that first, I think it was a hot SM thing, the, uh, the one of the relief camps. Um, I can't remember now, is it two years ago, something like this? Yeah, uh, about two years. Um, so you've not been to the State of the Map conference before. Have you watched the live feed at all? Um, One or two from last year. Um, there was, I, I think, because I only started getting involved maybe two years ago, I, I, would, I watched a few of the conferences on, especially on connected with the uh, solar panel um, energy mapping project. I, I watched that one. I didn't. I didn't dip into all of them, and probably less than I should have done. But that that was that was an interesting one to pick up on because I, I'd been involved in it in some way and had developed part of the the mapping. And actually, it's quite interesting because on that video, I could actually see the specific bits and pieces around the country where I was probably the only one mapping because it was so remote and dotted around in a very particular place. And I thought, you know, well, there's no one else actually gone up there. Um, so it was it, it was nice to feel connected in that way. Yeah, nice. Uh, so thanks for that, Ian. Um, so yeah, uh, and now I'm joined by Hannah, so I'll let her introduce herself. Um, hi, Hannah. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm Hannah Krüger. I'm from uh, from Germany, Cologne. And I'm uh, yeah, um, a meta since uh, 2012. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, and how did you contribute to, how do you contribute to OpenStreetMap and perhaps how has that changed since you started? Um, when I began, I uh, started as a yeah, kind of heavy mapper. Um, so I was uh, really uh, mapping, I think, uh, yeah, almost every week or um, yeah, something like that. Um, when I finished my studies or my studies became, um, yeah, bit uh, yeah more serious than um, uh, yeah, that got a bit less um, but not my activity in OpenStreetMap because uh, at the moment I'm quite um, um, yeah uh, doing quite a lot for the um, local chapter in Germany uh, at the moment I'm also uh, one of the board members um, and I'm uh, also quite in organizing conferences and uh, yeah, some mapping parties I organized as well. And um, yeah, did a lot of uh, yeah stuff around uh, OpenStreetMap, but not uh, so much mapping anymore. Uh -huh. Right. Uh, yes. So, um, do you also do some new work? I think um, some work to help new people in OpenStreetMap. Uh, yes, uh, that was also uh, one of uh, one of the parts that I uh, yeah I focused a bit on. Uh, that was especially uh, the documentation in the wiki, uh, and also the communication with uh, communities, uh, which was also related to my local chapter work, um, because I was very uh, yeah uh, I found it quite interesting how um, uh, how different communities communicate. Um, and uh, that there are a lot of differences. For example, in the uh, German, um, the German local chapter communicates a lot with um, with emails and with the forum. Um, and uh, for other com communities, uh, this does not work this good. And I think that also leads sometimes to problems that uh, the uh, German uh, the German community often writes a lot of uh, emails on the. Or some F uh, mailing lists, for example, or on um, tagging or whatever, and then it looks a bit like that these, um, um, yeah, um, these discussions are a lot, uh, yeah, yeah, there are a lot of German activities and also uh, European activities because it's our main, ch uh, our main ch channel for communication. But uh, this, of course, does not represent all other communities in OpenStreetMap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, indeed, and uh, you know a lot about the communications, and we did a talk last year, um, so yeah, I think people should probably watch that, um, I'll put a link to that, um, 
But yeah, the German local chapter that you mentioned, um, and said a bit about um, what does, for those who don't know, what does the chapter do? Um, yeah, we have our own conference, which is um, yeah, a bit different than the um, uh, than the Zotem because it's more uh, focused on uh, business. Also, it's more business conference than a mapper conference. There's also some mapping activities, but uh, this is just one part of the um, of the conference. And um, yeah, we also have uh, our um, yeah um, monthly meetings and so on, like I think most uh, other um, chapters in yeah. Germany. I think that's uh, that's quite uh, something that's a bit different about the German local chapter that we are uh, have also a part that is very focused on business with OpenStreetMap and with uh, cartography. Um, yeah, so the events and business connections um, that you've been to a few. Yep. Um, so why should people um, go to these events? I think uh, they should uh, go there because um, yeah, you can meet there uh, others uh, that also participate in the OSM community. And I think it's always best to speak uh, face to face and see really that there are persons behind these usernames you sometimes see in uh, dis discussions or in um, um, yeah or, or in the change sets um, and. I think it also solves a lot of um, conflicts and problems, uh, and it's also a lot of fun uh, just yeah to meet others um, because um, yeah I think OpenStreetMap is some kind of um, yeah do it on your own hobby, uh, and um, yeah sometimes the uh, yeah the communication and also the yeah meeting others uh, is a bit less than uh, in other hobbies. Yeah, um, it is fun, um, and uh, hopefully somebody will get um, yeah, hopefully some will get back in person to events. Um, but yeah, uh, so sort of a bit about that when you meet people. Um, how do you explain the street map um, and that it's different to other things? How would you what would you say? Um. Yeah, I think uh, when I mostly uh, explain OpenStreetMap, then it's to someone who never heard about it. And then I often say something like that, that it's um, yeah, an alternative to, um, yeah, to uh, yeah, maps like uh, Google Maps or something like that, um, because there is a community behind it that is collecting uh, this data. And um, uh, of course, it's always a Bit tricky to explain it because so when you don't have any uh, experience with this topic then it yeah sounds a bit weird <laughs> to collect <laughs> uh, data and POEs and all this stuff um, yeah that's um, but I think that's uh, how I mostly explain it um, yes so um, I think that a lot being done um, but what's the what would you say is the most interesting thing that you've seen map or no, it can be mapped in OpenStreetMap. Yeah, so um, I think uh, in Germany uh, that's quite a quite a meme uh, that these um, uh, yeah uh, vending machines for uh, yeah I don't know how to say it, for dog bags or so. Yeah, dog dog bags. <laughs> I don't know what's the. <laughs> <laughs> what's the the good uh, um, yeah English word for it? Uh, that these are also mapped in OpenStreetMap and quite a lot. And uh, I think there are um, yeah a lot of uh, people that are doing this because uh, in bigger cities the uh, ma uh, the map is already quite full with a lot of POEs. And I think that's uh, that's quite of uh, amazing that the um, uh, that the detail level uh, in OpenStreetMap is now so high uh, that I think in uh, in Cologne, for example, there are not so many of these vending machines that you can map anymore because they are already. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, amazing what people will map and fact to map. Um, so you've uh, you're now documenting the wiki a lot and updating that. Um, 
And would you say your local area, Cologne, is it is the map complete there? Uh, of course, of course, it's not completely mapped. I think that's uh, impossible. Um, but uh, we have um, um, yeah, a lot of uh, very, very ex uh, yeah, extreme mappers uh, here in my region. Is for example one that's uh, called the Trostorfer. Uh, yeah, um, and he's I think mapping every day, and uh, his uh, yeah his district or his um, yeah his town. Uh, is already mapped with all the uh, lamp, uh, lamps or, um, in the streets and uh, everything. So, um, and uh, of course, he's also mapping a lot in Cologne and especially in the district where I live. Um, so, of course, there's always something to do. Uh, every day, I think uh, a shop in a big city like Cologne is closing and uh, another is opening. So, um, or uh, some opening hours change, but there yeah, it's. Uh, uh, at the moment, it's not so interesting anymore for me uh, to map. So I'm more uh, thinking about um, yeah the um, uh, yeah organization and uh, yeah doing there a lot of things. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so that's great. Thanks uh, for answering those questions, Hannah. Um, and it's good to have an insight uh, for me to see further than the UK to Germany. Um, so. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Cool. Uh, so that's that. Um, talking about Germany, where it's very mapped, and we talked about, uh, we heard from Ian about how he's done a little humanitarian street map. Um, and so he's, yes, and then he's also got involved in projects politically. Um, there's lots of things there. Um, I'm going to just, I've just got, had those people to talk to, but while the conference is going on, um, use the different social media and the chat features just to talk to people, particularly following a, a talk can be good, um, or you can just kind of chat to people and ask them, oh, hello, who else, who's new there, who's uh, only been mapping for the last year or the last five years? Um, or ask, has anyone been mapping for a long time? Or does anyone map land posts? Um, there's lots of interesting questions you can ask and chat to people. Um, and as I said, hopefully, um, when lockdown can be more relaxed, the different places can meet in person. Um, some of those events, the big ones and the more local ones, will, will start again. Um, but yeah, if you want to start a conversation, why not use the... Um, conference hashtag uh, if you just want to make it clear you're doing chatty uh, you can put hashtag hello OSMers um, and we'll see who replies um, I'm sure you'll hear lots of interesting people as the conference continues on as well cool, thank you Right. Thank you, Gregory, Ian, and Hannah, um, for that interview. Uh, that those two interviews. Um, the the situation on the pad in terms of questions is sort of developing into details of the map in Cologne, uh, because uh, you mentioned that, Hannah. Someone would like to know whether there are lots of cell towers mapped in Cologne and whether they are disguised and whether there are deletion wars where some people delete stuff that they found, find unnecessary. Maybe you can sort of just say a few words about your mapping experience in Cologne as a, as a very densely mapped city. Yeah, so of course it is um, very densely mapped. It's, uh, yeah, uh, it has more than a million um, yeah, people living there, so there are a lot of details. Um, I think the house numbers and streets, they are, um, yeah, they are complete. Uh, in Cologne, it's uh, at the moment, uh, the uh, local uh, government is uh, starting using OpenStreetMap as uh, their database. 
um, and they are uploading also a lot of uh, POEs and stuff uh, they need uh, for their maps. Um, and um, yeah, so it's it's very high densely mapped. Um, I don't know about uh, cell towers and something like that, so I'm uh, yeah, I haven't looked this up. Um, yeah, I think that is <laughs> the situation in Cologne at the moment. There's another question that deals with your work in the Fosters board. Um, it's uh, by uh, an Irish mapper who says that they have just created uh, an organization themselves. And they would like to hear about the German local chapter, how uh, actually what the board of directors do and how we, how the breakdown is between practical work and, and project planning in the board of Fosters. Um, so uh, we have a board consisting of four members. Uh, so we have the head, uh, the second or uh, the vice president, um, the treasurer and uh, me as the secretary. And um, I think, uh, so of course we are organizing a big conference at the moment. Uh, we are uh, thinking about uh, having uh, more than 600 uh, people for the next conference. So this is taking a lot of work uh, during the year. Um, we also organize two um, hack weekends. Uh, that's of course um, also, um, also something that takes um, a lot of time. And um, I think um, besides these activities, uh, we are working, um, yeah, let's say um, a lot of uh, stuff that is coming up. Um, so we are um, we are more focusing, I would say, on the um, uh, yeah for um, yeah on the work um, yeah on the, on the organizing work. So there's uh, I think not so much uh, practical. It's more writing emails and uh, and we also have our own uh, micro grants uh, programs uh, that also takes some time. Right. There's another question that has come in um, because you you in your previous answer you mentioned that uh, that the local government is actually using OpenStreetMap data. Um, there's a question that asks uh, whether they are using OSM uh, in a in a cadastral sense or whether they still have their own more precise uh, wholly government data. Um, so at the moment, um, they still have uh, their own uh, database, um, but for roads and buildings, uh, they are uh, they want to uh, use only OpenStreetMap uh, because uh, they notice that the data is uh, yeah is better um, than their own uh, their own database. And uh, at the moment, um, they are, there is this uh, big process um, that uh, they are adding uh, some uh, yeah, some roads and uh, some tags uh, that are missing for them. So it's um, a lot of very special um, taggings uh, that they are um, doing there. Um, uh, for example, um, there was some issue of a couple of months ago uh, with um, graveyards and how to um, how to map the ways and passes uh, there on this yard uh, there, um, which is in OpenStreetMap uh, not not tagged because um, yeah you just yeah it's they just say it's a gravel road and um, yeah so but I think uh, when I'm right they are thinking about uh, uh, yeah. Um, going open street map only for roads and buildings quite soon uh, i think they before corona they were thinking about this year but i don't know uh, how it is at the moment all right going back to to the interview that you did with with gregory um and this is actually a question to both of you to hannah and ian um are there any things that that you kind of felt that, that would have been obvious that he should have asked, uh, but hasn't, uh, that you would like to add to the questions that, that he went, I mean, that's for both of you, that's a little bit in the past that you recorded these things, but is there anything you would like to add? Mm -hmm. 
probably. I'm just going to apologize my my audio and video. Hopefully, when I turn my video off, that's pretty poor case. Uh, that was one question, which was uh, about what's the most interesting thing you've seen, uh, um, which we which was out. I think it's, uh, the, there's the, there's some things which I ended up doing, um, especially in the um, the the, the in Maputo. There was a there was a military base in the middle of town, um, and this I, I mapped it all all the buildings, all the all the roads, all the entrances, all this business, and um, then afterwards I thought. Perhaps I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe it's a bit sensitive. But then I think someone else went in and blanked over the whole lot of it, but still didn't remove what I'd done. So it's kind of got That was it. Um, and, you know, it's perhaps the stuckness of the difference between people who have money and the people who didn't. So there were very, very big houses. Because it's big shop centres already up in the north, um, and only uh, you know one or two kilometres away, there were people living in tracks on the side of the road and things. And I thought that was quite a, 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 a kind of poignant thing. It, it, it made me think of the, the relevance of mapping and putting people on the map in whatever their circumstances could be. Maybe that's a question. <laughs> Very good. So uh, I'd, I'd say we I'd say we close this now. There's a couple more questions about the details of the Fosters organization on the pad, but I think Fosters releases yearly reports, even in English. So uh, it's probably not something that we need to <laughs> discuss in this session. Um, I'd like to thank all of you, uh, Gregory, Ian, and Hannah, uh, to have the stamina to, to uh, still be available at this time of the day. And uh, I'd like to close this first Sotom 2020 day with that. Thank you and bye-bye.